Something a bit different again this week. I really don't have time to script anything at all, so I'm going to do this entire thing on the fly. Yeah, even I'm bored of that joke. Um, so, I wanted to talk to you about some of the completely mental things I have now done with my smart home, uh, specifically related to my security system. I walk out of this room, right? What's this? I walk out of this room and... The room went off. My Mac just locked. And the camera's now watching. What on earth? And a very cheeky little thing that I've done between Home Assistant and my Fire Stick. We'll come to that in a second. And I did talk recently about the LCAR's security panel that I'd set up in Home Assistant. And seriously, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's a really cool thing. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the incredible things I've been able to achieve specifically with my Rio Link cameras, because they have this incredible integration with Home Assistant, but also because they're just generally great anyway, even if you are not a massive nerd. Now, whilst this video is sponsored by Rio Link, most of these automations will work with any camera system, so don't go anywhere if you don't have a Rio Link camera. But it's not just my smart home that is probably the the unthinkable part of all of this. I've decided that I'm going to leave all of my cameras in my house running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, specifically so I can win arguments with my wife. I'm dead. I, I'm, go I'm going to be killed. We're going to start out with the one that I am personally most excited about because I've just achieved it, and I think it's fairly unprecedented. So, I'm sure most of you know that you can load a video feed from a security camera on a Fire Stick or a Google Home device just by asking Alexa to load the feed. And over the years, I've been more disappointed in the amount of time it takes Alexa to get a camera to load on the Fire Stick than I have been in Princess Amidala for continuing to date Anakin Skywalker after realizing he was a murder knob. <laughs> murder knob? What is a murder knob? What's wrong, Annie? Quite a lot of uh, nano leaf is probably a big part of it. Quite a lot of nano leaf. I killed them. I killed them all. They're dead. Every single one of them. This is for you. It's a red flag. I've solved it. I've solved the smart home problem. Check this out. Alexa. Show me the back patio. Okay. <gasps> Instantaneous! Instantaneous results! But I, I've taken it so much further than that. Check this out. Alexa. Show me all indoor cameras. Okay. That's it. That's that's the feed of my house. That's that's all my indoor cameras on one screen. Um, but I can I can do more than that. Alexa. Show me the transporter. Okay. That is an overview of my house. That is all the presence sensors in my house. And you can see Captain's ready room is lit up because I'm the only one at home at the moment. And on the right hand side is a map and you know, if people on the internet weren't so bloody weird, I would actually be able to show you what that normally looks like, which is a more close-up view so I can see whereabouts my missus is and make sure she's safe at her parents or safe at her job or wherever she is in the country. I can see it because her phone is tracked by Home Assistant and I can see her on the map. Basically, I can load any of my Home Assistant dashboards straight to my TV, which means I can load camera feeds, but I can also do completely insane things. Alexa. Show me an overview of the ready room. Okay. Completely insane. And the beauty of this is if the camera feeds take a while to load normally, if you only have one camera feed, that won't matter. Because the script that I have written very specifically checks 
is the last URL already loaded? And if it is, don't reload it. That way it's already loaded in the background and when I switch back to it, it just comes up instantaneously. If you've got one doorbell feed, it will load instantly every single time. But I've also been able to automate it. I mean, this is the whole point originally, right? I wanted to automate it so that when someone presses the doorbell, it loads on the TV immediately. And that's exactly what it does. Fish eye cameras highlight the size of my nose. I get insecure for weeks. I obviously have to have an internet connection for Alexa to do the request, but all of the feed happens locally. It takes my rear link cameras from my NVR, which is a local device, and then passes them straight to the TV through Home Assistant with nothing in between. No cloud, no nothing. How? How, how did I do? De even I'm not sure how I did that. <gasps> How? I can do it locally because as soon as I add my Rio Link camera to Home Assistant simply by adding the Rio Link integration, I have access to those feeds locally in Home Assistant. And all I've done is I've installed something called Fully Kiosk on my Fire TV. That wasn't easy. It is perfectly simple! You can't do that directly, annoyingly, it's not in their app store. You have to go to their website, download it to your phone, and then send the APK file over to the Fire TV using Apps to Fire, which is just a, an Android bit of software that you can stick on your phone, which allows you to install stuff to your Fire Stick that you wouldn't normally be able to. So I installed Fully Kiosk on my TV, updated the settings in Fully Kiosk to allow remote administration with a password, added the Fully Kiosk integration into Home Assistant, and then created a Home Assistant dashboard for each individual camera. From there, I can just simply load the URLs for each individual dashboard into Fully Kiosk by sending them across my network using a script. There it is. I don't believe it just worked. <laughs> if I'm completely honest, I'm actually following this through for the first time myself. I did it! Hooray! From there, I just exposed that script to Amazon Alexa and then created a routine that said, when I say a particular phrase, load that script. Really is that simple. Really, very simple. <laughs> It's perfectly simple! It is perfectly simple! If you want a full tutorial on how I achieved exactly this, then just hit me up in the comments. Let me know that you want it. I need to kind of gauge interest first, but also subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, I'm probably going to make a tutorial on this when I get bored. The kind of guy I am. <laughs> This has nothing to do with anything at all, but you know when you see this billboard and you see that Star Wars and Cats is playing at this venue, you know what I see? You will join my empire or you will die. That was far more disturbing than I meant it to be. Anyway. And this works as well as it does because Rio Link's cameras work the best in Home Assistant out of any camera on the market. The feed is almost entirely instantaneous and the speed of which it responds is just second to none. The Rio Link E1 zooms that I've been sent have an actual proper optical zoom function in them. They've done it again. You can actually properly zoom in on stuff and then focus on things optically, which means there's no horrible digitization. The camera quality, not only the construction, but the image quality out of these things is second to none for an indoor camera. And if you're thinking, I don't need an indoor camera, that doesn't matter. The rest of this video's got a whole bunch of stuff you're gonna be interested in, I promise you. Even if you just wanna point at me and go, look at that idiot, virgin. That's <laughs> about right. That's about right. I still have sex with a lady! If you're in, seriously, if you're interested in a camera system for Home Assistant, it's Rio Link all the way. Go read any forum. Don't just take my word for it and go, mm, that guy's sponsored. Go and read any forum entry on Home Assistant and you'll find Rio Link is mentioned over and over again because they really are the fastest and their integration has the most settings, which we're going to talk about in a moment for some of the other things I've achieved. 
Here's your second one. Any camera system that is heavily focused on security won't actually send you a rich text notification when there is movement or when someone presses your doorbell. You'll just get a notification that is plain text saying, somebody rang your doorbell. You don't get an actual image or a video of that person ringing the doorbell. Unless, <laughs> unless, bespoke configuration dot yaml fires. Unless you spend a long time with ChatGPT making it want to end itself. I have had a lot of very ferocious arguments with ChatGPT to achieve these things, right? But I got it to write the script for me. And this script is incredible. What it does is anytime there is movement on a particular camera, and I can obviously choose which cameras do this, it will take a snapshot of the thing it has seen, bury it into a folder somewhere in Home Assistant, and then send it as a rich text notification through Home Assistant instead of through RioLink. So I'm just gonna move in front of the camera. That's the notification. It's got a picture. You can see the picture. So that's a little snapshot that Home Assistant sent me. And when I open it up, instead of just taking me to the Home Assistant screen, it takes me to where I can actually click on the video and start the live feed. Look at that. But look at that. It doesn't get any faster than that. That's amazing. And that's a Wi-Fi camera. That's a Wi-Fi camera, dude. That's unbelievable. I'm in love. And again, this is actually something you can achieve with any camera system, but I do highly recommend you do it with RioLink because of the quality of the image. But not only that, but also because all of their latest cameras are Wi-Fi 6, which is why this image is so buttery smooth. They are one of the best quality camera manufacturers. Listen, this isn't an advert. I can, I can see people in the comments now going, it's so stupid. I'm it's not, I promise you, this is how I feel about it. I have tried a lot of camera systems and this is best bang for buck when it comes to quality. And seriously, some of their top end cameras are utterly insane. Again, if you're interested in a tutorial on how to get rich text notifications for a camera system that is not supposed to have rich text notifications, let me know in the comments and I shall do it. You can, you can join the rebellion. It's embarrassing. But, uh, my friend might have been banished. My forgotten. The bosses would do terrible things to me. Terrible things to me if me going back there. Whoops. Anyway. The most important rebellion of all. The rebellion against Jar Jar Binks. Just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Privacy mode, if you're the, you know, the tinfoil hat type, you're probably worried about whether people are watching you through your cameras. Um, and maybe you should be, because if you have a ring camera, they probably are. I've been watching you poo. Duly noted, take me to maximum altitude. Because Alexa is watching you poo. I don't know why I have this jaunty angle going on like I'm some kind of TikToker. Check this out. Alexa. Privacy mode. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> Paul from the future here. I've just achieved the unthinkable. I've just installed Home Assistant on the Mac. I didn't know you could do that. And Home Assistant advertises all the Mac's states. And also, I found a way to control the Mac using Home Assistant using a script in reverse. This means that I can walk out of this room. I mean, not this room. This is a room from the future. You can tell because of the flying cars. I can walk. Hang on. I can walk out of this room, and when I leave this room, it locks my Mac, and it sets the camera to monitoring for movement, and to send push notifications, and do all that good stuff. And when I walk back in, of course, if a burglar walked in, I don't want it to turn privacy mode on, so I can't have me walking in be the thing that triggers it. And I thought, if I unlock my Mac, if I unlock my Mac, that can be the trigger to set privacy mode, and the camera spins around. I, watch this. I walk out of this room, right? Watch this. I walk out of this room and... The room went off. My Mac just locked. And the camera's now watching. What on earth? I don't believe it worked. And I walk back in. And the room comes back on. Alright, the camera doesn't spin round because I might be a burglar. All the usual stuff happens. The TV comes on in it. I come over here and I unlock my Mac. <laughs> Privacy 
she wrote. Oh my god. I don't believe I just did that. I can't believe I just achieved that. If you want a tutorial on how I did that, let me know in the comments and I, I shall look into doing that too. I shall let Paul from the past get back to it. With rear link cameras, privacy is actually kind of like baked in. It all runs locally and you can cut it off from the internet entirely if you want so that there is no way anyone at Rio Link would be able to view your feeds or go and look at your playback files. Only you have access to it if that's what you want. It does have cloud connectivity if that's a thing that you want to do, but if you're focused solely on making sure that only you have access to your recordings, then you want to get a camera like Rio Link. Shill! He's a shill! Pull him as a shill and I hate him! <laughs> Okay, other cameras are available, but I recommend these ones. I'm currently using the E1 Zoom, and I've just put them all around my entire house. And the plan is to set up geofencing in Home Assistant so that any time I walk into the house, it immediately puts them into privacy mode. Now, there are two ways of doing this, and I'm going to do both. Reolink's integration is so good that you can actually choose to set privacy mode just by pressing a button. I can of course do that as an automation as part of geofencing and it stops the feed from working until you go in and press that button again. You can also actually stop it recording to the NVR because that is a separate piece of functionality and this is something that you do not get on other camera systems. I'm not saying that because I'm sponsored. If you go and get Eufy's integration in Home Assistant, you'll find it doesn't have all of these options. Paul from the future of... Are we divorced or dead? How's it gone? Trying to prove Nisha wrong with cameras wasn't a good idea. There you have it. It's fine. We're, we're, we're not dead. Hit, hit me up in the comments. Tell me what I should be doing next. Tell me what you guys do with Home Assistant that perhaps I haven't done already. Tell me what you're doing with your camera systems. And let me know if you think I'm wrong. If you think Rio Link aren't the best camera system on the market for Home Assistant, I would like to know why you think that. If you're interested in getting started with Home Assistant, there's a video here which will walk you through how to get it set up on a mini PC. And seriously, it's the coolest thing you'll ever do with your time. Before becoming a virgin again. Women. That's not true. You know, you know what really turns a woman on? Bespoke configuration dot yaman fires! All that's left to do is to thank Rio Link again. There are links in the description to their products where you can pick their cameras up, and I highly recommend you do. These are my patrons from Patreon, and without them, I wouldn't be doing this for a living, sponsorship or not. These are the best people on earth, and I'm thanking one every week. This week is my latest patron, Daryl Hendry. Dude, thank you so much. If you want to be like those guys or like Daryl, you can come and do that at either PayPal if you want to buy me a one-off beer or Patreon if you want to support me long-term. And either way, these are my Facebooks and my Instagrams and my TikToks and my social medias. Come on out there and be best friends. See you next time. So professional. <laughs>